I just want to show this really quick. Look at all these fingerprints. I just touched the phone and I just washed my hands before touching it. And this screen protector, that, like, look at this. Like, it, I don't even know where they're coming from. I mean, like, obviously my hand. <laughs> But like, I, I don't understand. Like, I just washed my hands, so there's literally no grease on them at all. To show you by comparison. Very dusty, hasn't been used in a while, but like. Like I'm getting in there. Like, this is just a first-party uh, screen protector from Nubia, so, like... Then you look at this. So that just goes to show that screen protectors are not made equal. This definitely has some anti-fingerprint coating on it. This was just cheap off of Amazon, uh, which fits terribly. Uh, we'll come back to the screen protector later because there's a few more things that I want to touch on. Which is these screen protectors for the camera. Now, I saw some pictures online saying that there were people who had um, the lenses shatter uh, just from pressure in their pocket because the gap is so big and the glass here isn't the same glass that they use on the front, so it's not as sturdy. So that kind of got me a little bit paranoid. So I bought these glass screen protectors, which are terrible. This is the third one that I'm using. Uh, it was a pack of three for like 10 bucks. I mean, you can't really expect greatness here. But you can see that there's a giant scratch right there. And then right here, it's actually lifting again. And that was the main problem, was it started lifting from both bottom corners, and this one lifts and then obstructs the zoom lens, so then the whole picture is super blurry and you can't see anything. Uh, they also drastically reduce image quality, which really sucks, but that's, that's what it is. You're putting a piece of glass with adhesive over top of a lens. It's not going to be crystal clear. But at the same time, I figured it was gonna be so close to the lens that it wouldn't make that much of an impact but it definitely does. So now let's get to the screen protector, which again, super cheap, Amazon. I think I got a two pack for like $10, it might have been like 12 bucks or whatever, free shipping, like super cheap. But you know, COVID among other things, I've just, I, I haven't even been at work. I've literally been at home. There's no heat in the garage. This has literally seen nothing other than my office and the living room. It's never hit a floor. It's never been dropped. And look at that, it cracked and that's just from pressing the button and having like the slight amount of pressure on the side of the glass ended up cracking it. Then at the bottom, again, that was from missing the USB port when I tried to plug it in. I put it in and it slipped up and cracked it again. Um, it didn't completely shatter the screen protector, which was good, but these things suck. Like, don't buy cheap glass screen protectors. Like, I'm definitely not recommending these things ever again. And this one did cover the uh, camera lens which was something that I wanted because like here around the flash, it's a very bad example right now, but it's always hard to clean in there when they have a little cutout like that. And I figured for the front camera, I just wanted to have it, even if the image quality was a little bit reduced, it would still be easier to clean that off rather than having a camera that's super hard to clean and then look significantly worse. So a mild reduction in camera quality would be better than complete reduction in camera quality. However, they fit terribly. Okay, so let's uh, open like a light screen so you can actually see what I'm talking about for the fitment. So let's just open the browser, I guess. So at the bottom, they have these little black lines in them, the painted black lines, so that way they just line up with the phone. And you're supposed to use that as the alignment, which at the bottom fits perfectly. And then there's the top, which you can't really tell right now until I turn it and then you can see light coming through at the top here. So right across there, light's coming through because it has kind of like a little cutout for the speaker, which isn't even needed because it doesn't even come close to the speaker. The speaker is like way up there, like into the case basically. And there's a huge gap that wasn't even necessary and it's there and the light peeks through. So 10 out of 10 would not recommend getting cheap glass screen protectors ever. Like it's it's not a good time. Also, it like creaks. Like that's, that's the screen protector. <laughs> like what is that? 
Like, why? It's like the adhesive is lifting, but you can't see it lifting. I don't know, it's terrible. We have this little circle. That's for the fingerprint reader. So they literally put a thinner piece of glass in the screen protector to try and stop the fingerprint reader from being able to read your fingerprint. But when you're doing a screen protector on the front of the phone, there's a setting in the phone for it for when you have a glass screen protector and they didn't take that into consideration. So they just made it thin. Now you have this circle that literally sits there. Like, look at, you can see it all the time. You can always see the circle. This has been driving me insane. Like I always try and like wipe it off or something because I always think there's something on the screen. Like all you have to do for this, you go into your settings, you go to display, you go all the way down right here, touch sensitivity, and you just increase the touch sensitivity. And now the screen is more sensitive to everything that it gets touched by, which means that the fingerprint reader is more responsive. And this does work. I've even tested it by having a dirty hand to pair a fingerprint, so that way when I'm in the garage, it will unlock the phone to the fingerprint reader, and the fingerprint reader wouldn't read my hand while it was dirty. So that was that was my theory, was to have a fingerprint paired while my hands are clean, and another one while my hands are dirty, so that way the fingerprint reader works regardless whether I'm in the house or in the garage. And I couldn't pair the dirty fingerprint, and then I turned that on, and I could pair the dirty fingerprint, because it becomes more responsive. So there's, there's literally a feature in the phone for it, and this, which you can also see the adhesive bubbled up because it's thinner in the middle, so it's actually a raised area that has to get pressed down. So this section is actually flexed in and there's air stuck under it. So again, don't buy cheap glass screen protectors. Like, yeah, they keep the phone fine, but honestly, I bought a two pack of these off of Amazon for whatever, like 10, 12 bucks, something like that. And both of them didn't last me as long as the cheap free plastic one that the phone comes with. So it just goes to show, even if it's cheap, even if it's like a free screen protector from Samsung, it's from them, therefore it is quality, just like this one. Like everybody knows how much I raged about the screen protector on the Red Magic 5G because it literally scratched within the first hour because I had it on the desk and it's still, still slippery. Like look at that. I have never seen a phone that is so slippery in my life, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. What I'm trying to get at is that this is a first party screen protector from Nubia. So it's a quality item. And you can see that the fingerprints, like like they're there, but not that much. Like, <laughs> it's like I'm drawing on it. Like, what is this? Like, I, I literally have to clean it so much that I've just completely given up. Like I'm taking the screen protector off, of the, off after this video, obviously, like this drives me insane. Not that I have to daily this phone anymore because I have the S21 Ultra right here, but I am gonna be using this as like a, a secondary phone for each channel. So what I was currently doing was, so with the three channels that I have set up, I have three phones set up for each one. So for the channel Ben Anonymous, this one right here, this is the phone that I end up using, my daily driver, uh, because that's the most active channel. So that's the one that I respond to the quickest. So this one right here is set up for that channel. So the YouTube studio and everything is all set up for that. This one here is Be Anonymous Media, the media channel for like photography and stuff. But when I'm making those videos, when, they, when the old ones finish uploading, there's gonna be significantly less uploads because those videos take forever to make like literally days of filming and everything for the production quality that's going on that channel unless it's just like music related or whatever uh, but even then it still takes like days to produce music so this phone here I still like it I still want to keep it around because I'm running the pixel experience ROM and that ROM is fantastic so I'm gonna keep this one around for communicating on that channel and then this one here because it's already beat up and you know this thing's gone through hell and back and it's still holding on pretty good. I was just gonna use that for the garage. Now I have the S21 Ultra, so this one is going away. This one is going to become the new phone for working on cars in the garage, uh, which is probably a terrible choice considering it has holes in the side, uh, but it is already cracked, which I've explained in the other video, so I don't really care that much, and the phone's cheap. So if anything does happen, well, it's cheap. Plus it looks really neat. And it's still the headphone jack and everything, so I can plug it in for music or whatever in the garage. So all of the notifications are gonna come through on this phone. This one is gonna be Be Anonymous Media, and this one is going to be the Hate Me Club. So that's that's my phone setup. That's why I have three. So I am still going to be using this, but now because this is going to be for the media channel, which is essentially everything to do with cameras and music, so that's going to be inside or with all of my camera gear, which is heavily protected, which means I'm not going to need a screen protector on it at all because I'm not dealing it. It's never going to see the garage. It's always going to be either inside or protected. So I'm just going to take the screen protector off entirely as well as the one on the lens. But before I do that, I want to show you 
uh, the difference of camera quality because it's, it's actually kind of astounding. And I'm going to show you the difference between the camera with the uh, glass ca camera screen protector, that thing, uh, with that on, with it off. So let's get our model here. Um, I got to clean that. There we go. Nice and clean. So you can see that scratch really good now. So now that it's all cleaned off, you can actually see really well where it's lifting, right in the corners there. And then it's even lifting a little bit uh, right there by the zoom lens, a huge scratch right across the middle. Um, I just absolutely put a fingerprint right there and now I have to clean it again. And I literally just tapped it just a little bit like, that's it, boop, fingerprints everywhere. What is this glass made of? My hands are so dry that like my skin is like flaking and it's still leaving fingerprints. I don't understand. Like cheap glass is just something else. I don't get it. Like it's it's literally better without without the glass, without the glass screen protector, without the glass ca camera protector. It may may help it in the event of like a drop where it like slightly takes some of the impact before the actual glass itself. But realistically, it has caused more problems than it's actually fixed. And I had three of these. This is the last one. And it's same with the screen protector. I had two, and this is the last one. Because I tried to give them a chance. I figured, okay, you know what? Maybe the first one just sucked. I'll use the second one. Okay, maybe the second one just sucked. I'll try the third one. And I like, I really tried. You can see the alignment. They're like, I tried to make that absolutely perfect. Like around the microphone, everything, all the way along the edges. Like I, I really tried to make that absolutely perfect. I cleaned it completely with alcohol even, just to make sure that it was flawless and has the most adhesion and it's still peeling and then also you can see how it's hard to clean in those areas where it's recessed like especially around the microphone and that's what i was talking about with the front like if you have one of the screen oh my god jesus christ if you if you have one of the screen protectors that has the cutout around the camera they're really hard to clean in there and even nubia took note of that and they put the screen protector go right over top of the camera so that way it's super easy to clean and they did a really good job because it doesn't obstruct the camera that much like it's, it's actually pretty good so see, I don't hate Nubia. They actually made a really good product. It's just their software is garbage. As for this, uh, cutout, you know, uh, 48 megapixel, I think it was. No, 40 megapixel uh, front camera. So the fact that it covers it really doesn't matter that much because the resolution is so high that when it's compressing the photos down to like something usable, it's still really clear. Like you're not going to notice anything there. So for the screen protector, highly recommended uh, to have one that covers, not one that cuts out. Uh, for the back, don't run one. Don't run one at all like it's terrible and i don't understand why these cameras pick it up so much because usually if you have like a filter on like a camera lens like an actual like glass filter that goes on the lens it's so close to the lens itself that you can't see the minor imperfections in your actual image because the camera is looking so far through it uh, so for instance like my hand right here up against the camera look how blurry everything is in the background but if we're not focused on my hand and we're focused on everything in the background you can no longer see all that detail in my hand because it's blurry so when it's doing that it's still doing the same thing through the filter except it's not focusing on those minor imperfections and because they're already so small they become completely unnoticeable because it's looking directly through them essentially because they're so blurred the light is essentially going around it so it's the same kind of thing with like a shadow and if you have a shadow and you go close to something and then the shadow starts like touching it before your hand is actually going over top of it. You'll notice this a lot outside. It's the same kind of thing where the light is actually wrapping around it to actually make it hit because the light source, or in this case, the image source is so far away from what it's actually looking at that it's it's almost like it's bending light. There's, there's, there's tons of things about this on uh, YouTube that you could watch about bending light and um, how you see around objects. But I figured that was going to be the case for this because with the front, that's a very reasonable thing. And the camera on this is 108 megapixels. So I, I really thought that it would just see through any imperfections and the resolution of the camera would be enough that when it compresses down to like a, a usable size image that you can see that you would be able to have a usable image. And it's really not. When you go to the camera, there's the wide angle, which is a 0 0.5. Then there is the regular, which is 1.0. And then there's the zoom five. So the way you can tell the difference here is if I cover oh, the camera icon, cause the camera's on. If I cover the zoom lens and now we zoom in, Oh my god, this is so hard to do. How am I going to do this? Wait, if I, okay, so if I do that, now I have this available, and I can cover the camera, so now we can zoom out, 9, 10. So 10 is where it switches to the zoom lens. So 9.9, .9, you can see that my finger's not moving, 10. As soon as we hit 10, it switches over to the zoom lens. So this lens starts 
at a 10 times zoom is a digital crop on this lens. It's not actually moving. So that's the power of the 108 megapixel camera is that it's such a high resolution that you can literally zoom in and it still looks pretty crisp. Like you can see like the little rubber knurling and stuff around there. And that's a digital zoom or like a digital crop. Like that's just cropping the image in. So if I were to just go to one and then just take a picture and go to the picture and zoom in that much, that's exactly the same as doing that digital zoom. It's just that the final picture will be this without anything else. So that really just goes to show how good this is. It gets better, but we still have the glass on it and there's a giant scratch going right across it. So it, get, it gets better than this. But finally, let's get to the camera test. It's bad. It's, it's really bad. Pictures are taken and now we're going to use a trusty rusty razor blade and like, I, okay, this looks really sketchy, but I don't understand what happened. Okay. These are, these are stainless steel and it's for taking like stickers and vinyl off of uh, windows, uh, like window tint or whatever. So that way it doesn't scratch glass. Stainless steel, like just, just to show. This is a brand new one, brand new. I bought a huge pack of these. I was like, oh yeah, I'll just buy tons of them. They're stainless steel, they'll last forever. And they're all like this now. So these are good razor blades. They're very sharp. I don't understand what happened. Um, you just have to check the edges because even the edges rusted. So some of them do scratch. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to use the new one, obviously. And I'm going to take this uh, screen protector off here. So that way we can just like peel under the corner and I don't have to worry about anything scratching. Uh, uh, so let's get under here. Oh my God. That'd be good. Now we can just do the rest by hand. Ow. No, I can't. This would be way easier without the case on, but I'm lazy. There we go. Okay. So you can already see how scratched it is right across. Look at all the scratches going from the top to the bottom. That's just from wiping it off. So that's from like a cloth cleaning fingerprints and everything off. So these things are junk. That. Ooh. And that was like a year without one. You can still see scratches because like I said, use this in a garage. It's lived a hard life, but even the glass looks better than that screen protector. Okay, so now let's do the front. Okay. Oh, wow, that, okay. All right. Oh, no, okay. We're just gonna break in the middle. <laughs> oh, and it cracked all the way across here too. Deadly. Okay, junk. Look at this screen. Perfect. So factory screen protector, most of its life, like the cheap plastic one that it comes with, and no camera glass protector on the back, but I did have a raised edge case that kept uh, most things away from the camera. And that was, again, most of its life working on cars in a garage, everything. Also, let's see here. Mm-hmm. Barely anything. So, like, it was 100% it that glass is not fingerprint resistant. Like, it was literally pulling nothing off of my hand to get stuck to that. Way better. So clearly cheap glass screen protectors are terrible, at least in terms of cosmetics. Like, yeah, they probably protect it or whatever. Like they're, well, I mean, they obviously protect it from scratches because something is scratching them, not the actual device itself. But it's almost a waste of money because you're gonna go through so many of them that just buying a good quality one is gonna last so much longer that like the price to uh, replacement ratio is going to be so much less that you're gonna be going through a higher price tier of multiple screen protectors than you would of better screen protectors. So if you have to buy a glass one that's like 40, 50 bucks Canadian versus like, I don't know, 10 of those, then you're looking at like at least $100 in screen protectors versus half or less as much for a higher quality one just because the glass is literally better. So like the actual glass itself matters. So don't, don't cheap out on these things. Like these are terrible. So now that we have all of the glass off, I'm gonna wipe it down again, just to make sure everything's absolutely perfect. And I'm gonna retake the shots that I just took.
So I feel like those are pretty definitive results that if you're going to be buying a screen protector, at least get a good brand or something reputable that's out there. Because if you're buying cheap ones, you're going to be replacing them so often that you would have spent less money if you had just bought something of a higher quality. And then just like on the back for the camera, I feel like those results were pretty definitive. They're terrible. They ruin the image quality of this phone. Uh, the comparison side to side should have spoken numbers towards you about how bad it actually ends up being. Because you can see that after basically a year of using this phone, it's like perfect still. There's really not a huge reason to even get them. Like you're not going to get tons of scratches on it. And this phone has gone through hell and back. So for what I've put this phone through and the condition that it's still currently in, I would say that running one on the back is just a waste of time. Like I, I wouldn't do it. I've seen no point in doing it. Um, as for the front, just get a good screen protector for the front. Even like I mentioned with like the fingerprints and stuff on the glass itself versus the screen protector. Like I don't even understand where that was coming from or maybe that was the anti-fingerprint coating that just wasn't working or it was defective or something. You can literally just wipe them right off. And on the other one, they just smudge everywhere and you literally can't. Like, it's just such a headache. They cause more problems than it's actually worth. And yes, you're saving a few bucks, but at the same time, it's going to be causing more issues. So not all glass screen protectors are made equal. And running the glass protectors that go over top of the rear camera is just a giant waste of time. So I hope you found something useful here. I liked the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't like it. Comment something down below, uh, maybe some other reputable brands that you've tried that you've had really good success with. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, or if you want to support the channel, feel free to join the members program. There's also extra perks of knowing all of the videos that I'm currently working on and how they're going and progressing, as well as access to the members section of the Discord for this channel. Or, you know, don't do any of it. I'm not telling you what to do.